Are you coming to film with me? Is that what you're doing? Did you want to film the video with mommy? <laughs> you boy. You cute boy. My cute little camera hog. Hmm? Okay, let mommy film, okay? You sitting be good? <laughs> you sitting there being good, Snuggles? Hello, my charmed ones, and welcome back to my channel for a video that has become something of a Christmas tradition here on my channel. For the past several years on Christmas Day, I have been sharing with you all my planner setup for the new year, and today is going to be no break in tradition. That is exactly what we're going to talk about today, and I have my beautiful Chanel desk agenda here in front of me, all set up for 2023. But before we jump in to all of that fun, I just wanted to wish each and every one of you here a very Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays and a glorious New Year. If you've been with me for, I don't know, how long have I been here on YouTube? Like over 10 years, 12 years, 13 years. Oh my God, I'm getting scared counting since 2009. <laughs> so whether or not you've been here since back in the old days, 2009, and consider yourself one of my OGs, or if you're someone who is a more recent follower or even someone who perhaps is finding me for the first time with this video, I would like to say welcome. My name is Alexis. I'm also known as Miss Trenchcoat all across the internet and I help ambitious women plan for a balanced and successful life. And that's what we're gonna be talking about today with one of my absolute favorite tools, which is my customizable planner system. So before we actually jump into the overview, I wanna give you a little bit of a primer that for a number of years now, my planner system of choice has been a customizable binder system, which means that I get a binder that allows me to essentially build my own planner and I can fill it with inserts that work for me and create what I like to call a functional planning system with my planner. So unlike some other people on YouTube, I see my planner as being a tool for my productivity to get things done. There's nothing wrong with using a planner for other purposes, but I'm all about using my planner to help me get organized, to remember the things that I'm trying to go after and achieve, and to essentially be more efficient and focused with my time. So if that's what you're looking for, maybe some inspiration on setting up a planner that way, according to the functional planning methodology, then you are in the right place. Of course, I also want to remind you, for those of you who are new, I'm sorry if you've heard this a million times before and you're an OG, but for the new people who have perhaps just found me, I actually wrote the book on functional planning and you can purchase that. It's called the Functional Planning Handbook. It's available on Amazon. I will go ahead and leave a link in the description to where you can purchase that book as well as where you can purchase many of the planner inserts that you're going to see today. Because as part of my custom planner system, I actually for years and years now, since 2014, have been designing my own inserts and I actually have a whole shop where I sell my inserts called the Charm Shop. My inserts are all print on demand PDFs, which mean you get a file for me and then you're able to print the inserts at home and cut them and punch them so that you essentially can create your own perfect system. And I always love having the digital PDFs because if you purchase you know, planner inserts from a third party, sure, they arrive to you probably looking wonderful and um, you know, pre-cut, pre-punched, but we're talking about a paper planner here, which can very easily become damaged. So um, I'm always one who likes to have that flexibility of being able to reprint my inserts or to print multiples of something or more of something than perhaps I initially thought I needed. Um, so for that reason, all of the inserts in my shop are printable PDFs, and I do have tons of resources to help you if you are new to printable planning goodies, and I will leave those down below as well, just to help you get your feet wet and understand like how you actually use them. So for me, the first part of setting up this planner was going through all of my different files and printing them out and cutting them and punching them and essentially arranging them into the beautiful system that I have sitting in front of me. So. Without further ado, let's go ahead and jump in to the overhead of my planner and let me walk through how I have my planner set up for 2023. 
Okay, so I think we have a nice little overview here for you to get a look at my planner. But before we talk about my planner, I want to show you guys actually the pen that I am going to be using at least at the start of 2023 with this binder. It is from Coeco Sport. I'm not sure if you're going to actually be able to see that. There's a lot of reflection with my lights in the room today. But this is a Coeco Sport fountain pen with an extra fine nib. And I'm just using their black ink cartridges that come um, from Coeco. So nothing too fancy. But fountain pens are something that I got into in 2022, like after years of resisting it. And I actually really do enjoy them and find them to be really interesting. And I love, I love the way the ink looks. And it's just a beautiful, dark black ink, which is really important to me. So this is the Coeco pen in the color Macchiato. So this is what pen I'm going to be using. And I'm going to be using a whole number of like <laughs> highlighters and all different things as well. Um, so that's just, you know, one little detail. And I most likely will use other pens as well throughout the year, but that's the one I'm starting the year off with. So I thought I would just kind of show it to you guys. So here is my planner itself, the binder itself. This is from Chanel, as you can see down here. This is a Chanel desk agenda. I have a whole video on where you guys can find these and how you can purchase them because they are a little bit harder to find generally. This is a black caviar leather. Excuse the dustiness. Sorry. Black picks up dust, of course, like a magnet, but it is a beautiful leather cover that I've had for, I guess like maybe two years now, I forget how long I've had this, but I absolutely love these covers. It's literally just the beautiful covering or container for what is actually the important parts of what is actually inside my planner. Now, as you can see, my planner is disc bound, right? So that is the binding system that I use. And I'll leave you more details on getting started with disc bound if you're someone who's new to the concept of disc bound. But essentially there's these mushroom shaped or ended discs that essentially hold on to the paper and give you the ability to add and remove pages, of course. And, you know, with a disc bound notebook, you're able to like flip the planner, you know, the pages on themselves, right? It's kind of like a spiral, which is something that I really like that you're able to do. And um, because it's this kind of very flexible system, I'm able to house it inside of an agenda cover like this quite easily. So let's go ahead and just start with some like cute stuff on the left here. I just like to have kind of this opening inside is much more like decorative and inspirational than actually very functional. So I just have a piece of paper that's been printed out in this pretty pattern. I have a journaling card that actually comes from the bonuses of the mastermind. And I just want to remind you guys, I'm probably going to try as hard as I can not to reference where things are from. I will probably put it up screen, um, up on the screen um, where things are from just so I don't take so much time like telling you where things are from. So watch out on screen. That's where you're going to see like indicators of what everything is, where it's from, if you would like to get it as well. So this is from the master planner. This is something that I created for myself. It's this 10 habits of highly successful women, just kind of like a big bookmark trying to, to fill the space here. And then down here, I have these really cute little page flags that I purchased from Amazon. Very simple things just to help me to kind of notate things in my planner or if there's something that I wanna move around or I know might move around, I might put it on one of these little guys. Um, I'm not someone who does a lot of pretty planning. You're not gonna see stickers in my planner very much or washi tape or anything like that. I'm, I'm mostly just like sticky notes, pens, highlighters. That's kind of my jam for planning. So. On the right side here, I have a little bit of a dashboard here. This is actually just like a clear zippered pocket that just has another journaling card, another little card that I made. And actually these are some stickers from Chanel that are purely decorative. And then we get into my planner, right? So because I don't use stickers to decorate or washi tape, what I like to do is use different dashboards and like printed vellum, right? To add like interest and kind of like a layered look in my planner. So here is, Kind of like the first vellum dashboard and i print that at home with my own vellum then i have my 2023 dashboard i'm so excited with this this came from the advent of productivity calendar um, i love it because it kind of talks a little bit about the significance of 2023 which is a numerology year seven once lunar new year comes it's going to be the chinese zodiac year of the rabbit so i just i'm, I'm obsessed with this dashboard 
And then we get into kind of the front matter of the Charmed Life Master Planner, which is my signature like flagship planner. Um, I have these master planning worksheets in the beginning of my planner. So this is where I will put my goals eventually once I'm finished working those out. It's still, you know, still a little bit before the new year starts. So I don't have those things like finalized completely yet, but that's where I will transfer information to. Here I have a insert for my ideal day. This is an activity I like to do often, kind of just breaking out what an ideal day would look like for me, like in a flow of a routine. Similarly, I have one for my ideal week. Again, these things are still being developed by me for what I wanna do. So once I have those, they will go into my planner and be kind of written as ni nicely and neatly as I can. Then I have some routines and strategy information here just as reference. Then I have my vision board area. So this is where I'll be putting my vision board for 2023. I will be creating my vision board most likely in January with my mastermind because we do a vision board party in January. So it's going to go here when I make it and I keep it inside of my planner. But I do have some other videos on how to make a vision board for your planner and I'll leave those linked down below. Okay, then we actually, something that's new for those of you who are you know, repeat watchers who have seen some of my planner setups before, you may have recognized that for a couple of years, I've had like this default organization of like the order that my inserts would be in in my planner. So generally, once the front matter of my planner was gone through, I would go right into my calendar and agenda inserts. But this year, something I decided I wanted to do was I wanted to treat my planner as though the most priority items were at the top. And so for me, the biggest priority items that I have are my mindset aspects. So like my mindset work, affirmations, things like that. So I have my first section that's kind of divided out with this. This is like a new insert I'm giving to my mastermind. <laughs> Spoiler alert, mastermind, you guys are getting this soon. I printed it on vellum and on actual, just normal printer paper. This first section is my mindset section. So um, what I like to do is I like to keep lists of affirmations. I will definitely be populating this with more information as the year goes by, but um, these are some affirmations that I have, an emotional vortex image. This is something that I created um, and some daily mindset work inserts. I generally have decided that I'm not going to be doing a tremendous amount of journaling in my actual planner next year. I'm going to I try to keep that separate and keep it in a separate binder just for space sake. Um, but I do have some of them in here in case I need them, right? Just, or in case like some days, maybe I, I'm not going to journal them out, but maybe some days I just want to look at this list and kind of say them out loud to myself or like think of the answers. I totally think that counts as doing mindset work. So if you can't write it or you can't type it, at least review the questions and think about what the answers are, right? Very important. Okay. So my mindset work is first then we get into my calendar and these beautiful classic dashboards i think you guys are going to notice the theme with these dashboards are like very like ancient greco roman sort of inspired then we get to the like i said the calendar section of the master planner this is my year on two pages just the little mini calendars this is my yearly tracker this is where i'm going to be tracking my menstrual cycle and some other like personal health items on here like my weight this is the yearly overview. This is actually like a year on four pages. So it's like a quarter per page. And this is an insert that I use to track astrological events and any other like random sort of like events that might be going on throughout the year. I would, if like for forward planning purposes, I would put them inside of the yearly overview. Uh, and then we get this really cute 2023 little year on one page instead of two page a little bit of overkill but this insert actually has the annual holidays in it so i have that listed out then we have the yearly tasks insert which is basically a place where i will put things that like generally just need to happen like once a month or they happen less than once a month and i just want to keep track of like when was the last time i did this for example when was the last time i gave the dog a bath right um or gave him a haircut right or did his nails i will keep things like that in this list as reference right this would also be a great place to put bills and things like that but my bills are mostly on auto pay but um i may actually i think last year i did put a couple of bills on here. So I may end up putting a listing just a few bills on there. So that is um, my yearly task tracker. And then we get into 
my actual monthly inserts. Now, as you could see, my planner is not very thick, right? These are only three quarter inch discs. So I only keep 90 days of dated inserts in my planner so that I'm always focused on the next 90 days. And that really helps me for like business and just like, just in life. I think like if you are looking at too much, like looking too far ahead, when it comes to your planner, it can become very distracting, right? So I like to be focused on the objectives and milestone, like accomplishments that I'm working on just for the next 90 days. So this is January. I'm using this year the month on two pages insert. This will act as like a little bit of an editorial calendar. It'll kind of just be like my overall calendar for like due dates and events um, and all of like the big picture things I've got going on in a month. Then we have the monthly master task list. So as part of my planning process, the functional planning methodology, I keep a task list broken out for every month of the year with tasks that are need to be worked on or are due in a given month. So again, instead of looking at an entire task list of every possible thing I could be working on, right? I'm able to be focused on what are the tasks I need to get done this month. Likewise, I keep a tracker in with like my monthly and weekly sections, which are, which will help me to break out like my specific objectives that I'm working on in a month. So like objectives or, you know, projects or something like that, that I'm working on for the month. And then it helps me track any weekly actions or daily actions that I need to be doing to keep on track of my work. And then here, I should have taken these things off so you guys could see it a little better. This is my week on two pages. This is like my, I think this is my horizontal layout. So it has room for me to put my weekly objectives, any reminders, business and personal tasks, habits. And then on the right side, I have the ability to put in my top three tasks, like the top most three things that are important for me to get done in a day. And then any other like information or schedule items in the blank area. And then I actually made myself this this year from the inbox dashboard that came with the, as a bonus with the master planner, I made myself a new actual like inbox and I printed this on vellum and I used an inbox label. Just so you guys know, cause I know I haven't mentioned it yet. These labels are actual printable planner tabs um, that I use to organize the sections of my planner. I don't really like to use big dividers because again, those take up a lot of space like in my planner that I really don't have. So I use these printable tabs and let me see if I can grab one. Okay, so here's two here that were from the sets that I printed out in order to set up my planner. So this is what they look like cut up. It would print on a full sheet sticker label paper and then what it is essentially is the tab and I pull off, you could pull off the backing essentially, right? And I'm not gonna do that right now, but you would stick it to a page and then flip it over and it sticks on itself. So these are the divider tab organization method that I use. I absolutely love them. They're so easy and convenient and super easy to cut out with a paper trimmer or even by hand because everything's kind of like squared off. So. I made this inbox dashboard as my like my page marker for where I am in my weeks and it breaks down kind of an Eisenhower matrix of like do now schedule for later delegate delete or defer so I can actually like use sticky notes to kind of list those things out if I want to um, and so this has just been ran through a laminator right so I laminated the page just to keep it you know you know good and and solid for the whole year okay so um, Continuing on, there really isn't anything in here that's different, just like different dated inserts. At the back of these, every, of every month um, of these inserts is a monthly review where I can just really quickly list out like what worked, what didn't work in the month, any tasks that are important that I didn't get done that I need to migrate, and like what I've learned, right? Like what have I learned about my productivity and planning in the last month that I need to do better <laughs> moving forward, right? or even like what I'm already doing better that I need to make sure I keep up with, right? So there, like I said, there are three months of inserts in here at any given time. And then we get to another like divided section with another beautiful vellum. This is like a picture I took and I put on vellum. This is my CEO strategy section. So my CEO strategy planner is a dedicated set of inserts that are essentially worksheets for 
creative business owners. So if you're someone who runs a business and you use a physical planner and you feel like you need like different sorts of inserts to organize different types of information and essentially create a business plan for yourself inside of your planner, like a functional one that you can actually use to get things done, that is what the CEO strategy planner is all about. So in the beginning here, I always keep my CEO business brain, brain dump triggers list. And then we have the executive summary. So I have my old inserts for this, but something I like to do as part of my yearly reset practice is I like to kind of just review this information and rewrite it out. It really helps me to make sure I'm staying focused on like what I'm trying to accomplish with my business. So this is like a traditional executive summary information. Then I have a page for my target market, my brand vision for the next year, three years, five years, 10 years. And then we actually get into the business plan. So here is the overview of a business planning insert where I can break out my income targets by quarter and different quarterly objectives as well. And then I can list out an overview of the essential elements of my business that I'm working on this year in terms of my products and offers, list building initiatives, marketing and development. And then I will break those things out into actual objectives and I will map them out across the year in this monthly business plan over objectives overview. And then for every quarter, I like to have like this little income breakdown statement where I kind of like write down what my targets are for what I'm trying to sell and earn in the quarter. And then I can do a brainstorm, right? To help me identify like different projects and tasks and maybe campaigns that I could run in order to help me reach the goals that I've set for myself with my revenue. And then on the back of this page, I have um, this little overview for the quarter where I'm able to list out what my focus is for every month in my business, the main marketing campaigns that are going to be getting done and any list building initiatives, right? Because these are the three major things I would say, like what's the most important thing I'm focusing on for my business? What marketing am I doing? And what list building am I doing to actually like grow my list and ensure that I have a incoming stream of customers like ongoing. And then the final insert here for business planning are the monthly business plans. This is just a little mini overview that I use in order to help me almost pre-plan for the month. So I will put all of my business things on here and these inserts will get like, I'll scribble, I'll just write things in, I'll cross things out to make the plan. And then the information that goes on this insert will then go to like, for example, this is January, it would then go into the January planning section for my calendar, right, where I'm actually referencing that information in my calendar in order to see what I have to do on a day to day, a day to day or week to week basis throughout the month. So this is like a pre planning for my business where I'm able to like, again, identify the focus, any of those campaigns that I'm working on, I can kind of map out my marketing and um, content plan for the month or my editorial plan for the month, list out important dates or events I have for my business. And then I have a complete monthly master task list just for my business things, right? So that I can kind of like, again, pre-plan before it gets integrated in with my personal life things and is actually executed upon. So I have the first quarter of the year in here now. And then once the second quarter comes, I take these inserts out, I, I archive them, and then I put in the new inserts for the new quarter. So the next um, uh, divided section I have here for the master planner are my objectives. And what I have in here, I have a number of different inserts in here. I just, there's some things that I don't really want to um, necessarily review, but I can always, I guess, blur them out. So this first page is a marketing systems, like reference that I made for myself. This is literally my marketing systems that I do. Like this one says my live launch system, converting a live launch to an evergreen funnel, content marketing, marketing assets. I'm probably blurring most of this out, but I'm kind of like reading to you what's on the page. So you get a sense. This is, um, the couple inserts I have here are from one of my business course is called Insta Income. And literally I just print out my own workbooks and use them as reference sometimes because I'm, I, I love <laughs> like how useful the tools I create for my, like my own business courses are. Anyway, off topic. This is a lead magnet headline cheat sheet with a whole bunch of ideas for headlines, um, a brainstorm sheet, essential parts of a value rich lead magnet. Just these are reference things for me, hooks, email subject lines that convert, all of this was subject lines, 
call to action phrases. And then here I have my activities tracker and I'll show you guys it blank. So um, when it comes to planning, one of the most common questions I get asked by people is, Alexis, when I'm mapping out my plans, how do I know how much time to set aside for certain tasks? And my answer to that question is always, well, you have to actually kind of tr need to track how long that task takes you generally so that you then have a reasonable expectation to make um, when you're actually planning how much things you're going to get done in a given day. So this activities tracker is literally a page and insert that you can use to list out different activities you do for your business and even personal things as well. Like this doesn't have to just be business, but I have it in my, in my business section because that's where it's most useful for me. But you list out the different activities I do for my business on a regular basis how long it takes me approximately, the category of my business that it belongs to. And that's just kind of like a system I've come up with for myself. Like the category could be like the product it relates to or like a system it relates to, something like that. And then I list off the frequency. So how often do I do this task? Daily, weekly, monthly, or quarterly, right? So that basically I know when I'm planning that I haven't missed anything because I can, at the start of every quarter, I could go through and see, okay, what are the quarterly things that I, I do for my business? Okay, and make sure I plan time for those. What are the monthly things that I need to get done when I'm planning a month? What are the weekly things I need to get done when I'm planning my week? And what are the daily things that I'm planning when I'm you know, actually sitting down to make a daily plan, right? So this kind of becomes a, like a main tracker for me for all of that key information. Okay, and the next section here, which is the last business section that I actually keep in my planner, there are so many more inserts in the, this actually insert is not part of the CEO strategy planner, but um, there are many, many more inserts in the CEO strategy planner than what I actually use. Very often I will just you take what I need when I need it, so it won't be populated at the start of the year necessarily. Um, so the last section here for my business plans are marketing plans. This is a campaign builder, helps me organize any marketing campaigns I'm doing online, a content tracker, pretty self-explanatory, like any content ideas I have. This is a content outline, right? So it actually helps me to like brain dump my ideas of what I'm trying to accomplish with, with each piece of content. And that is the end of what I've got in my marketing section right now. Okay, so the next section I have is now my projects section. So once I've gone through, like basically my business is one of the highest priorities in my life. So once I've gone through and I have my business plans made and organized, then I'm actually able to go in and create project plans with them. So this is my project planning section. This is my yearly matrix where I can literally list out what projects or objectives I'm working on in, in a month, in a quarter, or in like the halves of the year. I also have a project tracker where I can actually list the project out, its due date, and kind of keep track of it. I use this less. This is really generally the view that I like to see the most when it comes to like visualizing my projects. But this comes from the Charmed Life Master Planner and this is included. And so this is another option for a view that someone might find useful. And I know many people prefer to see their projects listed like this. The next inserts I have in here are actually project plans. So this is where I will break down any in-depth projects that I need to work on for my business or even personal things as well. And I just have this whole section populated with just project plans. Then we get to the next section, which is my manifest section, which is literally, again, it, it's a place where I'll put reference information or where I'll do a little bit of like brain dumping or journaling on certain things that I'm feeling in order to help me to continue to stay focused on like the goals that I'm trying to manifest. A lot of times, like I'll write down like a whole set of intentions every month for like what I want to accomplish and how I want to show up and like how I want to be that month, right? And how I want to live that month. So these are just some, just sort of like some journaling inserts that are in there to get me started. But again, I have tons of other inserts that I would, you know, swap out as needed. Next section here is my brain dump section. So brain dumping, if you're not familiar, is the activity of literally unpacking all of the things you're trying to remember in your brain and putting it on paper so that you can then organize it. Um, so I, this section starts with my brain dump triggers list, which is like a list of 
you know, words or phrases for things that are supposed to trigger ideas for things that you've been thinking about, but you haven't written down. And so I've got that first. And then I have the actual brain dump sheets. So places where I can actually just list out anything I'm thinking about that I haven't like actually planned anywhere else. And then I can organize it on an Eisenhower matrix here, right? By importance and urgency, right? And that helps me to organize my things. So I know that I'm always, you know, I'm taking action on the things that are important and things that aren't important, I don't have to worry about immediately. Next section here is my brainstorm section. So um, as part of my master plan system, as well as part of like functional planning, I am really big on brainstorming. Now, I don't necessarily use these inserts a ton for my brainstorming. Sometimes I use them, but sometimes I literally just list things out or journal things out as well. So again, this is a section where different inserts might pop in there um, across the year, just based on like what my needs are. But brainstorming is literally the act of coming up with solutions for a problem or, you know, designing something that you're looking to design, organizing a plan. I consider this like the pre-planning method before you actually get to creating a project plan sometimes is actually just creating a brainstorm of like deciding what you want to do and how you want to organize it before you actually codify it onto the actual project planning inserts, right? So you kind of pre-plan it get the ideas out and organized, and then you've got the nice pretty project plan that you're actually able to follow. So that is the brainstorming section. And then the final section are my notes, which right now I have, again, I keep a lot of random bits and bobs in here. This should really be more like miscellaneous than notes, but right now I have my password tracker in here. I have a master meal list from my meal planner, and then I've got a bunch of note paper and my favorite note paper, which is just blank paper, right? <laughs> and that is all of the inserts you know, of my planner. In the back here, I keep this like really big, like this is a really nice size, like Chanel envelope that I got from like an order. Um, and I keep more inserts and little things tucked inside. It's just kind of like an extra folder, but also I like that it gives the back of my planner a little bit more structure. So that is everything that is inside of my planner for 2023. So that is my planner set up for 2023. I hope you enjoyed taking a peek inside my planner with me, a little guided tour. Um, I am planning in the new year to do some more videos that are a little bit more in depth about how I actually plan. So how I make use of these inserts. So if you are interested in learning more about how I actually use these things and how they kind of build a complete functional planning system for me, definitely make sure you're subscribed to my channel give this video a thumbs up. Let me know um, that you're excited for that in the comments. Now, if you're someone who is still looking for inspiration for setting up your planner, and that's why you've joined me today to get a peek at mine, I want to let you know that down in the description box, I'm going to link you to a recent video that I did that was more like a class or a training. It was, I think, a little bit over an hour long, but it's called the ultimate guide to a functional planner setup. So if you haven't seen that training yet, I highly recommend it because it goes in depth into the things that I think you need to think about if you're someone who wants to set up their planner, similar to me, in terms of it being a functional planner to help you organize the many aspects of your life and keep everything in balance so that you stay on top of all of the important things that you have to do and, and are generally able to lead like a more productive and successful life. So definitely check out that video as well. It's a doozy. Make sure you like a coffee or a beverage and you're comfortable, but also make sure you have a notebook and a pen or highlighters because you are going to take a bunch of notes on how to actually set up your planner like more functionally for your life. So that's about it for me, you guys. I want to hear from you in the comments. What planner system are you using in 2023? I would love to know like, what types of inserts, right? What type of pen are you guys using? If anyone has like really fun pen recommendations, let me know. Um, I'm sure there's other people in the community besides myself who would appreciate that information. So definitely share that information with us in the comments. And I will see you guys very soon in another video. And I'm wishing you the most productive and successful new year. Hopefully we'll be going through it together here on my YouTube channel and all my other platforms. I'll leave everything linked below where you can find, find me elsewhere and follow me around all across the internet. And until next time, bye-bye.
you doing? Hi, sit. Can you sit? Can you sit down? Can you sit down, Miss Lover? Sit. Sit. Couple ways. 